Hi everyone, it's Carolyn Zeiser, here to share another channeled message from the Light Keepers, a group of angelic beings I channel for your awakening and ascension journey support. So for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm Carolyn, I'm a distance energy healer, I'm a channel, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor. And I offer these channels for your awakening journey support. So in these videos, I offer you the channel from the Light Keepers on the particular topic, and then I give you my take and my experiences, and we really kind of talk through the topic. And today, we're going to be talking about stagnancy in the awakening. Oh my gosh, it's a thing. <laughs> So with that today, thank you so much everybody for joining me. Those of you who are new, I also offer down below, you'll see in the description box, a video on how to create flow in your body for health and wellness. It also leads you to more free content if you're interested, because I also offer a weekly channel in addition to other information on occasion. So I hope you'll join me. So with that today, I'm going to get started on the channel. I'll read through that and then I'll offer you my take on it. So let's get going. All right. Awake you are, now you find, going through the journey of all time, not a human process that you reflect upon, so you do not expect it to be as you think it should. Your human form does not know the way in which spirit works today. A kinder, gentler process too, often in the middle of so much shift and change for you. Times come and go of great action, but then is sown for you times of no movement in your day, feeling as you have done something wrong, bored you find, forcing and making to be what is coming your way. Stressed energy inside that only the human makes, striving for answers and pushing forward you'll see, is not the way it is meant to be. For times come and go of a gentler flow where much is not moving. And yet, you'll find that all is gelling deep inside and across the ethers we say for the next step that will come your way. A patient's practice this journey is, one that humankind has difficulty letting sink in. But all is meant to be, the tide slips out and prepares for the next wave in time. So sit back and find a way to accept what is brought to you today. When the times come that you find of what you feel is stagnancy and no movement in time. So, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I feel like we've all been through this or we will all go through this because it's an important part of the awakening journey. We tend to, in humankind, think that we need to keep plugging away and we need to keep moving forward and we need to see progress every single day. Well, guess what? That's not how the awakening works. We can often at times get broad expanses of time where we feel like nothing is happening. Particularly when we start to compare it to some of our earlier journeys. Now, typically, and, and again, don't assume this has to happen with everybody, but typically what we find is when people first wake up, there's this wide expanse of signs and messages and things that come your way and and it just can be sometimes overwhelming in a really magical way. But what happens is we travel further along in our awakening journey. Okay, they just said resting phases. <laughs> okay, like, like rest stations. They're talking about rest stations. We get rest stations, kind of like you're traveling down the interstate, right? And you need a, a rest stop. So they have a rest stop off to the side and you take a rest stop. You know, that's what they're giving me as a picture in my mind. So we need that for many reasons, particularly like they said, to gel what is changing inside of us because we don't see what's happening inside of us because our body is changing as well. So we're needing these times, sometimes large expanses, sometimes short expanses of time where we are just feeling like nothing's getting done. So what I want to do today is I want to share a few things. I think they're actually I have four items here, and who knows, it might expand to more than that um, as I start talking. But right now I want to share four things that really um, are kind of like signs of stagnancy, but also um, why we might be in stagnancy. I really want to talk about that because, you know, the word stagnancy is really not that appropriate because there's a lot going on under the surface. Okay, so now they're showing me, okay, they're showing me still water on the top and underneath the water churning, churning, churning. So there's a lot going on and in inside our bodies as well. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first one that um, came into my awareness. And there's different ways 
that we can either put ourselves in stagnancy or we can uh, naturally end up in stagnancy. And I am going to use the word stagnancy because for me, that's the best thing to use. Again, it's, it's not um, fully reality because there's always something happening, even though it doesn't feel like that to us as the human. So first of all, one in which I think we can get our own selves stuck in is the learning mode, okay? Now I think it's, I mean, I wouldn't be telling you this <laughs> if I didn't feel it was really relevant because I have a YouTube channel, right? And I love you guys coming in, watching my videos and liking, sharing, subscribing and being here and commenting. But what I will say is we can get ourselves so wrapped up in learning from others. And I mean like a multitude of others, right? Where we're searching for the answers, but we're wrapped up in learning, 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 learning. Now, there is a phase of learning and we continue to learn as we go, but I think most of you are aware that there's this huge phase that we come into kind of early in our journey where we cannot get enough knowledge, okay? But what I have found is we can often get stuck in that loop and a lot of it has to do with us not feeling like we have the knowledge or understanding deep within us, not understanding that, feeling like it's still external to us, that others have the answers, and that, um, you know, because other people aren't on a public forum, that they have all the answers. And most of you probably know well enough by now that have watched me that I'm just here presenting information and then my stories as well, because I don't know all of this and I will readily tell you that. But my point in this is, is for us to be able to go out and learn from others, but to know that we are to take that into ourselves and then to, um, okay, they just said piece of the puzzle. Make it a piece of our puzzle that we're putting together for ourselves. What resonates? What doesn't resonate? And then there comes this time where you will feel that, typically feel that you're starting to move away from having, I don't want to say having to, but the desire to keep learning from others. You'll kind of filter that down to a few, typically. Um, and then you may have spurts again where you're back out there um, and continue to learn, whether it be books or to be online, whatever it is. Um, but I do find that we can get stuck in this loop, particularly if we don't think that we have any answers, that everybody else has the mystical magical, okay? So take an assessment of yourself. Where are you at with that? And I'm not saying pull yourself out of the learning phase at all. I'm saying take a look at why you're in the learning phase still. Does it feel comfortable to you? Does it feel like it's one of those situations where you just don't think that you have any magic or um, qualities where you can um, start kind of, I would say, moving forward in, in getting some of your own answers as well. So what I would suggest is just kind of take a look at your learning phase, the length of time, the, um, the is it a kind of an obsession that that's really kind of all you're doing with your day or your free time? Um, and again, period of time that you're doing this because it's an important phase in the awakening journey. But the point is, is don't get stuck in it. Don't get stuck in the learning and the learning and the learning in the sense of if it feels like you're thinking you're not of the level of, of those people that are going through awakening, okay? Because you are and you're just in a different phase and you're going to find your own gifts and you're going to find what resonates for you, okay? So that's all I'm saying is we can often cause ourselves to get stuck because we don't think we have any of the goods going on like other people do, but we do. So take this for what it's worth and just take a look at how you're learning. And if you're feeling stuck, you might be stuck because you're in this learning loop and not looking to yourself for some of these answers too. Okay, so I hope I made myself clear on that because it's you can have a nice mix of that moving forward, but not having that be that your soul journey. Okay, so the second way that we kind of know we're in stagnancy mode <laughs> is, oh my gosh, when we feel like the magic has left us, um, when we are kind of bored, um, which sounds really strange in this journey that you could ever be bored, but it happens, um, where you're feeling like you're doing the mundane day-to-day -day activities. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, that happens to all of us, even those of us working in what I call the mystical magical realms. <laughs> Sometimes we're like, oh my God, so what's next? And the thing is, what we have to realize is we are brought these times to what they said in the channel, 
so that energies can gel, so that our body can shift and change, so that we're not overwhelming ourselves all the time. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, your higher self knows your human nature. And for most of us, our human nature is to constantly achieve, constantly strive, constantly project plan, constantly look out into the future, constantly wanting to get the next thing. And when you're going through the awakening, when you get all this magical stuff, oh my gosh, you just want more. So you're like grabbing onto it. You're trying to find it. You're trying to manufacture it. Sometimes that happens where you're like, I need to make this happen. No, you'll often get thrown into a phase throughout your journey of just resting and what feels like boredom. But don't mistake that for what I believe it really is, is an opportunity to switch it around in our human mind to actually be able to say, okay, I know I'm on this journey. No one's cut me off from this journey. That doesn't happen unless I choose to do that myself fully. And that's another thing I'm going to talk about. It's a time for me to go inward, potentially. Maybe you need more inward time. Maybe you need more quiet time. Maybe you need more 3D time because we are here in this human body to also participate in the 3D world in whatever way that means. And I've talked about this in other videos where we bring in the 5D beauty that we're bringing in as a new vibration into our 3D world. So we do this like I've talked about this kind of figure eight. But point is, is maybe this is time for you to go do other things. Maybe some things that you... Um, haven't tried before in the 3D world. <laughs> or just take some time to pamper yourself, do even more self-care, just enjoy this time. And yeah, I know to a lot of us who uh, can kind of be overachievers, that's super hard. Bless you for those of you who kind of don't do that whole human crazy, particularly in the westernized world thing of achieving um, grand things every single day. Because honestly, you're going to have an easier path of this, I believe, because this is about flow and what flows to you. And we need that time. Our body needs that time. Our mind needs that time to be able to gel with all that is shifting and changing in the awakening and in the ascension. Okay. So I'm going to move on to another one where, because some of these are human caused, some of these are just part of the process of awakening. Okay. So take this for what it's worth with respect to how you feel about yourself, but it's out, it's going to give you some kind of opportunities to look at um, what could be for you as you move down the journey. And it might turn a switch on like, oh, I'm kind of doing this. So the third one is, you know what, if you're getting lazy about the awakening, <laughs> Sometimes that's going to feel like stagnancy. Now I'm going to give you some examples. So they've always said the human has to come along for the journey. Okay. We can't just sit back and do nothing. Now your higher self isn't going to let that happen. You know, the mere fact that we go through these phases of learning, exploring, really wanting to understand and um, um, moving forward in that, that's all a human coming along for the journey, right? But things like, well, we, we have... And I, I will say, we do have the opportunity to turn our heads the other way and say, no, I'm not doing this. I'm just going to block all of this. Now, I still believe that that um, higher self is going to still knock on your door, but I'm not going to cover that part today. But what I'm covering today is, so let's say you had a really great meditation practice going on because you really jazzed up in your early days because all the mystical magical was showing up. And now the mystical magical signs and messages, they've kind of slowed down because that's kind of part of the process too. You start getting different signs and messages. Mostly you're starting, you're, you're continuing to get the numbers. And then sometimes they'll become more complex signs and messages. And yet at the same time, it feels different. It feels like you're not getting as much. Well, that can also cause us to get a little more, I guess I would say, lazy about our own awakening journey and not participate in the way we have in the past. Now, as I mentioned, we go through phases, so you're going to be potentially doing different things. And I'm just going to use one example. For me, and for what I have been told as well and that I speak about a lot, meditation is the foundation of building your awakening journey okay it's like building a house you got to have a foundation otherwise you got nothing to hold the house up with right so that's going to continue through your lifelong awakening journey and we'll we'll present you with um honestly a much smoother journey all the way around but anyway i've done videos on that before and i could talk about that all day but the point in that is is if you find yourself getting lazy about meditation and you're not doing as much and you're um forgetting 
maybe you're not doing the self-care. Um, for me, Epsom salt baths, right? Like I get into a hurry and I won't do them anymore. I've cut back and I kind of have been going through a little of this myself in the last month. My meditations haven't been very good. I'm starting to get a little lazy and I'm like, because I'm in this phase where I have um, something I have created, obviously my work here that I do in my business, Purple Rain Healing. But the thing is, as you're continuing down your path, I'm one that needs constant change with new things that are coming my way. And when you're in this phase where things are kind of trucking along, you can also start getting lazy in your awakening journey, which like I said, I have kind of done. So another part of that, I mean, gosh, now that I think about this, probably a good video for my own self-care because diet too. We can really start not taking care of ourselves um, as we maybe get bored in this journey and our jazz, we lose our jazz for um, the journey. Because again, these phases can last months, Sometimes they're days, but sometimes they're months, and we got to kick it back into gear, okay? Because here's the thing, all of what I'm talking about that I was, and there's much more, but that I'm talking about there with respect, respect to the self-care, which includes meditation, that helps you raise your vibration. That keeps you in that space of vibration. Are you falling back into old habits too? That's another one, you know, kind of things like, I don't know, let's just say, oh, well, I'll use a good example for myself. Um, I don't drink much anymore. I still do like my wine. I like a drink on occasion, on a weekend, if I'm going out with friends. But I'm finding that that's coming more back into my awareness. Like I'm shifting back into this lazy way of being. Now, not dramatically, but I'm noticing these little subtle shifts. And now I'm like, okay, snap it back into gear, Carolyn. You need to get back into your practices because, you know, vibration is important. This is how we care for ourselves is important. So we can get lazy when we're not getting the signs and messages from the other side and we start thinking we're getting cut off and all that silly stuff because that is not what happens. We continue through that unless we turn a blind eye to it and say, no more, shut the door and lock it. And that's a whole other conversation. So take a look at what you're doing across the course of your day. Is there something that is itching at you and you're feeling like, and like poking at you saying, you know, what's going on here? You're not doing that anymore. You're not meditating as much. And, and we have to be gentle with ourselves, not, you know, there's a real balance here because of course I just mentioned, we've got this time of, of space so that our body can shift and change, our mind can shift and change, we can continue to grow in frequency and vibration. But at the same time, we want to maintain our practices. We want to maintain the things that bring us into high vibration, the self-care, the enjoyment of things that we do. Um, so point made, I think. All right. So let's see the the fourth one that i want to talk about and again this is outside of yourself so we've got a combination of things here we've got things that we do that can cause stagnancy or that make us feel that way and that exasperate what might be part of the natural process so these can all be combined number four is so we may be in a place of stagnancy because others aren't ready so think about it and i do this all the time i'm like this is my journey right so i'm doing my thing and i i often don't feel like i have a lot of other people involved in it. Well, that is not true at all. I mean, that's not true at all. I mean, yes, I live alone. I have my own business, blah, blah, blah. I don't go out much. I kind of just am doing my thing, right? Well, but the thing is, other people come into our awareness and are a huge part of our awakening journey. And our awakening journey does not happen alone. So we can often end up in places. And remember, these are all legit phases that come in the awakening, but the ones that are caused by ourselves, we just got to be more aware of and have to kind of understand how that plays into the ones that are a natural part of the process. Others aren't ready to come into our lives to make that change, to make that shift, um, to be the key that opens the next door for us, right? So this is a huge um, master puzzle that's being put together. And that puzzle piece is found. Maybe it's another person. Maybe it's a um, another sign and message. Maybe it's, a, you know, who knows what it is, a job that you've got coming, a, a trip coming, whatever it is, something that will be coming into your awareness. The puzzle piece is not yet ready. And then the next puzzle piece comes in, click, goes into place. And then you start moving down your journey. So again, you're not traveling alone on your path. There is very much a point in time where we can feel stagnant because we're not ready yet. We're not ready. They're not ready. Whoever the they are, 
Maybe someone's going to knock on your door with an opportunity. Maybe you're going to have a partner in your business. Maybe you're going to take a class that hasn't started yet. Maybe, I mean, think about it. Everybody else has to create also before things can be brought your way. So that's very much what I have seen in my journey. A huge part of when others come your way and you just keep doing your thing. If you keep doing your thing, like I just said, your self-care practices and not in an obsessive way, in a way that just flows us through that stagnancy phase. Everything else is going to come when it's meant to come. Because people aren't always ready when you are. And we like to think that we're in charge of everything, that we can make everything happen, and that somehow we're not doing the right thing. Uh-uh. So that's why I want to talk to, about this today. Because we so often blame ourselves that I'm not doing the right thing. What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. You may be needing to tweak some things, like I mentioned here. Are you stuck in the learning mode? You know, are you also kind of slacking back on some of your self-care practices? Um, and there's some other things that we could probably talk about. But I want to leave you with these four today. It's why we can actually end up feeling like we're stuck in a mode of not moving forward, of feeling like the awakening has left us, our angels and gods aren't around anymore, we're not getting signs and messages. That's not true. Lots of times we just need a break. And I'm going to give you one other example for myself. Is sometimes what will happen with me is, I, as you know, I channel prolifically. Sometimes I'm just not channeling. Okay, because it does take a little extra energy. I mean, not so much anymore because it's just kind of natural. But sometimes I'm just not channeling. And then there's a part of me that says, oh, I better sit down and channel because it'll leave me. No, that's not true. We still want to keep practicing on our gifts and the things that are brought our way, regardless of you know whether they're a, a sixth sense gift or not, whatever it is, the gift that you have. Yes, we want to still continue practicing that and working on it, but you're going to get breaks because we need breaks as humans and we need to embrace those times and we need to be able to sit back and be gentle with ourselves and don't blame ourselves for these periods that are a natural part of the process. But again, to my point, just look at how you might be participating in those feelings of stagnancy. Give yourself a break. And then just kick it back into the into gear in whatever way that makes sense for you. And know that these times are going to come and go in the awakening. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. And as I always remind you, purplerainhealing.com is where all my services are listed. And as many of you know, Celeste and I are now offering team channeling, which is so cool. We've worked with a number of you and it's very exciting. You get an hour-long channeling audio session from us based off of a lot of your questions that you get to participate in, we facilitate a conversation, we'll rebuild your soul journey story and essentially present to you what we consider to be books of your soul journey versus chapters that you might get with one of us. So visit my website, purplerainhealing.com for all my channeling services, distance energy healing, as well as spiritual awakening mentoring, which is designed to help launch you forward when you work with me and I channel information for you one-on-one. -on -one. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.